Hello, I'm the Anime Viewer 66, and today we're going to be taking a look at the very well-known anime, Sword Art Online, otherwise known as one of the most divisive animes of recent years. The story of Sword Art Online is pretty straightforward. There is a new game called SAO, or Sword Art Online, that is now coming out on the new device known as a Nerve Gear. What is a Nerve Gear? Well, it's basically a helmet that you put on that allows you to transport your consciousness into a video game otherwise known as one of the coolest ideas for a video game invention ever. Seriously, people that invent video games get on that. Make it safer than the ones in SAO, obviously. But seriously, who would not want to be transported into a video game? That would be awesome. And so, when SAO is first released to the general public, it sells like hotcakes. Everyone buys a, cop a copy that possibly can. And at the beginning, everything seems like it's going great. The gameplay is awesome, the graphics are beautiful, everyone's having a good time, until they figure out something very important. They cannot log out. There is no logout button. The creator of the game comes down in what I can only describe as one of the most awesome forms ever, and says to them basically, you are trapped in my video game. If anyone tries to take off the nerve gear in real life, you will die. Basically. And you have to spend as much time as possible trying to beat this game and this game has a hundred floors yeah that bad and just to make a little added pressure if you die in the game you die for real or in other words people die when they are killed and all of this adds up to a pretty good premise for an anime however like any good story it needs a hero and the hero for this one happens to be Kirito Kirito is just trying to do what everyone else is doing which is defeat SAO as quickly as possible to get back home however Kirito has a slight advantage on others because he was a beta tester and that means that basically he played it before anyone else did and he has more knowledge about the game the only difference is when he played it there was still an off button Throughout this series, he is a really, really cool character, a bit of a goody two-shoes from time to time, but still really cool and personally one of my favorite characters in this series, and probably in anime. And then you have Asuna. Asuna is one of the coolest characters in this anime next to Kirito, because she can kick butt and take names with the best of them. But she also has a, re a romantic relationship with Kirito, which I will admit I thought at the beginning was... Oh, a romantic love interest, yay, because usually when they do this, they just have it to have some eye candy on the main guy's arm, which I'm just like, really, we're, we're going through this road again, really? But to be fair, her relationship with Kirito actually seems like a legit relationship. As you see the story progress, you see how much Kirito loves Asuna, and Asuna loves Kirito. It really is a beautiful story, and personally, I haven't seen a relationship done this well in an anime probably ever. Well, maybe a few times, but those are some other animes that were specifically romance animes. For an anime that is action-oriented to have this much good romance in it is very rare. And my hat's off to them for being able to accomplish it. However, there is one thing that people seem to have pointed out to me about the whole thing of Asuna later on in the series. I won't get into too much of what the details were, but basically Asuna gets into some trouble and she needs Kirito to come save her. Now there are some people out there that are saying this is sexist, that since Kirito is the big strong man and he has to save the damsel in distress, all this. Yes, you could look at that as being sort of sexist, but at the same time I would say that it's more of just Kirito showing his love for Asuna, and I guarantee you if Kirito got into the same situation of being in trouble, Asuna would be there to help him just the same as she, uh, he was for her. And then there is the unholy spawn that is known as the second arc of this show. Okay, the first season is broken into two arcs. The first arc is really, really good. I loved it. It's cool. It's awesome. The second arc, why? Just why? I don't want to get too much into it because it'll be too much spoilers and stuff, but I'm just going to say they took away some stuff they shouldn't have took away, they added some stuff they certainly should have, they certainly shouldn't have added, and one of the probably the most horrible things they did is the villain. I know that you're supposed to hate the villain, but you're not supposed to feel uncomfortable while seeing the villain. What I mean is, when you see a villain, you're supposed to know, oh, that's the bad guy. You're, you're supposed to know, oh, he's about to do something bad, horrible, all this. A good bad guy will make you want to see more of his acts. He'll, want to make you, he'll make you want to see 
what he's going to do next. Like, like a, a good example of that would be the Joker. The Joker is someone who does horrible things. And I know this is an anime, but just go with me on this. He does horrible things, but he's always very charismatic about it. And he always is the one who you know he's going to do bad stuff, but you want to see what he's going to do next. Or Sosuke Aizen from Bleach. He does really bad things, but you always want to see what's his plan. What is he going to do next? A good bad guy will make you want to see him on screen because you want to know what his plan is. You want to know what this guy is about. The villain they have for the second thing of Sword Art, the second arc of Sword Art Online, is just horrible. I wanted to punch him in the face. I didn't want to see him on screen. He was that painful to watch. And just to get an idea of how bad this villain is, we went from having a villain which was a dark and mysterious creature that no one knows who he is or where he came Well, they know who he is, but they don't know where he's at or what he's doing or where he possibly could be. All this. But then you go to this new villain, which is basically amounts to the Mighty Monarch. The only problem is we don't have Brock Sanson to beat him ten ways to Sunday. And so at the end of the day, I have to give Ward this anime three stars out of five. I really wanted to give this anime a five stars when I first started watching it, but I couldn't even give it a four star by the time I was finished with it because it was just that bad in the second arc. Hopefully the second season of this series, though, will make up for its shortcoming in the second arc of the first season. I'm the Anime Viewer 66. Thank you, and good night.